which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of kings are in thy rule and government, and that thou dost dispose in turn as seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee, so to dispose and govern the heart of Charles, thy servant, our king and governor, that in all his thoughts, words, and works, he may ever seek thy honour and glory, and study to preserve thy people committed to his charge in wealth, peace, and godliness. Grant this, O merciful Father, for thy dear Son, Jesus Christ's sake. the second Sunday after Easter. Almighty God, who has given thy only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that inestimable benefit and also daily endeavour ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same, Jesus Christ our Lord. First letter of Peter, chapter 2, beginning to read at nine, verse 19. This is thankworthy, if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if, when you be buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? But if, when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable. For even hereunto for were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, might live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and bishop of your souls. Here ends the epistle. And the Holy Gospel is written in that according to St. John, chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 11. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and, of known of, and am known of mine. 
As the Father knoweth me, even so I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they must hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Here ends the Gospel. Praise be to thee. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Please sit down. Now, at the heart of the collect today is the idea that Christ has been given both as a sacrifice for us and as an example to us. He has these two quite distinct aspects. First, by his death and resurrection, something has changed in the world. We live in a different world. One with the possibility, as the prayer says, of inestimable benefit to ourselves. This change has happened, we might say, externally to us. We make no contribution, and even our seeing the change and taking hold of it is a matter of grace. The second aspect, however, asks something on our part, for Christ is an example to us of godly living, and we pray that we may daily seek to follow his example, that we may in some fashion imitate Christ. This is an extraordinary pair of things done, external to us and in no way dependent on us, and things to do, a life to take up, steps to follow, our actions dependent to an extent upon our intention and strength of will. And I say to an extent because we know even our intention to follow Christ and our will to do so, in fact, depend upon grace. In a fashion, we break into a cycle of grace, of God's emitting this possibility and taking us up into it. We break in by our prayers, which we say together in the hope. So how does this cycle of things done and things to do work in practice? That is the subject of the epistle, a passage from the first letter of Peter, where he speaks of our imitating Christ. In fact, being Peter, he starts by making the point that, generally speaking, we deserve punishment for our faults, and that it is no particular virtue to endure such merited punishment with patience. It's a very Peter-like tone. However, if you do good for conscience towards God, as the translation puts it, and suffer patiently for that, then your patience is acceptable to God. For it recalls the example of Christ. He suffered for us, and we should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, nor did he lie nor deceive. When abused, he kept silent. When tormented, he did not threaten. These are all practical matters. 
temptations to sin, which we, we may in our turn resist, instances of patience. And resisted how? Christ committed himself to God the Father, the one who judges righteously. And here we move from Christ's example to his work of sacrifice. He bore our sins in his punishment on the cross, so that we, freed from our sins, can live to righteousness. Indeed, through his sacrifice, we can find the power to follow his way. And Peter sums this up in the phrase, by his stripes you were healed. And he introduces the idea of Christ as shepherd and carer, which is translated as bishop. Carer of our souls, and ourselves as sheep that were strayed, brought back to safety and a life worth living. Precisely in a world of sin, lies, abuse and torment. These are the dangers that are to be suffered patiently. And you can see why we might be compared to sheep in such a way, suffered patiently in imitation of Christ, as our souls are returned to their maker's care through his work of sacrifice. And the Gospel reading, taken from John chapter 10, takes up and develops the picture of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. It is a powerful picture, centering around the idea of self-sacrifice. The true shepherd is the one who is prepared to lay down his life for the sheep. Any other false protector flees when there is possibility of trouble, and the sheep are then abandoned to predators and become scattered. It is only when the Good Shepherd is present that the sheep may be gathered, each called and known by name, and kept safe, safe within the perspective of eternal life. And John adds a prophecy to the picture, the prophecy that the shepherd has other sheep, not of this fold, and that they are too must be called and gathered and protected, and that they too will share in the fold. In this fashion, John constantly raises our eyes above what we know and what we expect. The kingdom will be shared, and all kinds of odd and unknown creatures will be added to the number, far beyond our expectation or indeed comfort. There is nothing in the passage from John about our imitating Christ, only our knowing his voice and hearing his call. But in this last sentence, about other sheep joining the fold, we get a further insight into what imitation of Christ's life may include. Not only taking undeserved suffering without complaint, but also shifting our boundaries and accepting that this fold may include far more than we at present know or suspect. Let us then return to pray the collect once more. Almighty God, who has given thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life, give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive that his inestimable benefit, and also daily endeavour ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same, Jesus Christ our Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. In our prayers, let us remember those who suffer from warfare and those who need that they may seek justice and peace. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all we need, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church in the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Charles, our king, that under him we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto his whole council and to all that are put in authority under him, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice for the punishment of wickedness and vice, and for the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively way, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy name truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their lives. We most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. You that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, Judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our mistakes. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, <coughs> confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. 
So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sin. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very indeed right and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs on thy table, but thou art the same, whose property it is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made that by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as you should drink it, in remembrance of me. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by, with, by faith with thanksgiving. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful.
charts in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. You can stand for the glory of the King. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please kneel for the blessing. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you and remain with you always.